so what we have so we have this our, our AI now I think I think one of the things I want to do is give him a animator controller all right so we have here he is him and we have the same type of idea so I'm gonna make a combat one I'm gonna unprefab him and he's gonna get the combat one no root motion now the combat versions aren't gonna use nav mesh so instead they only need a couple things really is oh, let's see he's gonna need an attack you know even something like that it really doesn't matter and he's gonna need a death uh, he's gonna need to be able to get hit has an idle so that'll be the default state and uh, what else do we have we have a run okay so with this I'm gonna make everything transition back to idle except for the death death can stay on its own and I'm gonna transition from any state uh, to run any state to the combo any state to the get hit any state to the death pretty simple it looks a little jumbled and chaotic but it is what it is and we're just going to use some bools uh, we're going to say is moving uh, is attacking is oh, is hit and bool is death actually you know what I'm gonna change those two to triggers I think that will be a little simpler so is hit and trigger is attacking now on the death one I'm gonna go into the settings and I don't want to be able to transition to myself once we go into death we're, we're gonna stay in death and that's it um, the same with the running can't transition to self and then here the transition back from the running exit time off is moving is false so if we're moving is true we come into here if it's false we come back down to here the combo is attacking now there's no true or false because it's a trigger the get hit is hit and the death is death so that's our setup for the animator so what do they need we're gonna need an FSM for health and we need an FSM for combat so this little guy here let's let's give him a default health let's let's, let's use integers I, I like integers called health make that an input so we can change it out here and we're going to use an event called on damage and we're going to bring that in as a global transition and it's going to get in the event we're going to make sure to send a damage amount I'm going to 
use int subtract. I want the health to be subtract or subtract by the damage. You could run other logic here as well in between this, in between this, this little thing here, another state if you want like dodging and pairing. But for now, I'm just going to go basic and compare. Move that to the bottom. So if health is zero, we are dead or death. If it's less, it's also death. If it's above, we're alive. So death and alive. Okay. <clears throat> if we're death, set animator bool, which you'll see we don't have it. Oh, we do have something there. Oh yeah, we do. I was thinking we're over here. So we have is death true. Over here, set animator trigger, because we use a trigger for this side, is hit. That's that's it. So that's the health, right? We can default some health. And then we have the combat actions. <coughs> so one thing we do need on this Uh, this system here is is a queuing system and this guy ultimately what he needs is he needs a variable for attack speed and this will be the same with the player as well and we're gonna we'll, we'll say default it to 15 and in this, all we're going to do is um, float add, and we need a new variable, which is going to be our timer, and we're going to add our attack speed per every frame per second, and then float compare move to the bottom if attacks or if the timer is a hundred make sure this is every frame if it's equal we need to queue or if it's greater we can queue and if we queue then we need to add ourselves to our global manager to this queue and it needs a game object right so we're gonna have to get owner because we want to make a variable out of ourselves move it to the top all right and now we can add ourself <coughs> just like that and I'm going to put another one over here we're going to call this one reset and this one's going to be a global and if this one happens we are going to set float value our timer to zero and then we can probably leave that just as is. So when this queue system happens, um, <clears throat> it's going to tell this gargoyle that it can it can choose an attack. And if it, and being AI, if it's going to choose the choose an attack, it needs to a get a target. Well, we know, um, like we don't have the list yet, but we need the created players 
which will be the same thing as a created eye, but this will be the created players. And let's get array list get. I'm just going to get random from the created players of our manager. And it's going to be a type game object. And that's going to be our target. Now, once we have our target, we can now run some sort of attack or choose an attack, right? And we only have one attack, or I could do a random, uh, but, well, yeah, you know what? I'm going to do uh, array get random. I'm just going to do an array get random. And this way you'll you'll understand or see if you want more tax how we do that. And I'm, this is this was going to be a string. Uh, I'm just going to put it as two, but we're just going to have attack and attack. <laughs> I've only got the one attack, so he's going to randomly choose from his attacks. He's going to store value. Of our attack. Now, once he gets that, he will array array list add. Uh, so our manager also we have so we have the queue we need another one and this is going to be the combat queue so this one's more of a selection and this one's more of a pure combat and now we're going to add ourselves to that queue and this one's on also the, the manager Right, so we've added ourselves to that list. Now that we've added ourselves to that list, we also want to remove um, ourselves from the queue list. We could also do this part in the actual queue, but it's just as easy to do it here. And now that we've done that, we can truck along down here. And we can now, I'm not going to put anything here. We're going to say done, capital letters, done. We want a, another event called action. And when action happens, we want to send event by name to our, from, to ourselves. But the event we want is our attack, which is the one that's randomly chosen here. So now we can build out what the attack is. And in this case, we're going to use, we have, we have one called attack. So we can put it here, make sure to make it global. All right. So he's going to send it. It's going to come down here, but it's selected up here. And what that means is so we're going to build another FSM, but it's going to be a template. So I'm going to build it down here is if if we're going to actually physically attack, we're going to choose a player and we're going to go at them and attack. What does that mean? Well, that means A, we have to get a target. But we've already selected our target because we chose it before. So here's our target and it's an input because we're going to take it from the previous uh, action. And we need to get G 
get the position of our target and that's our target position and we need to more or less get our position or I guess you can't get I get our position isn't an action just get position of ourselves dear lord I can't spell so this is our starting position and we have a target position and we're going to operate our target position and our position we want to mm, subtract that to get a direction trying to think here because oh, if our player is facing north or if our player is facing left or right you know what we, we could probably skip that and get rotation so if on our target if the Y so if our oh, make sure to put that above all that if our targets Y is 90 they are facing over here if it's we're going to give this a bit of a range just so it doesn't you know have any kind of errors uh, target facing right and if target y also with 10 or 10 on the tolerance but negative 90 and if that's equal target facing left since there's a chance our players can be facing the other way so if they're facing right then we want to transform point of the target if they're facing right then we're attacking their their back so I'm going to go negative say two and that's our target position uh oh do I have a target oh I do have a target position I'm gonna get rid of this one we, 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 we need our start position so let's, that's our target position right and we, we can literally copy this one and stick it right here and have this one go here but this one's all this one's to the Z that's really the only difference if they're facing right then they th these two can meet up again and we can say okay let's set animator bool on ourselves is moving to true and then let's move towards uh, well I guess we always could just pick a target here didn't even think of that but we're going to use our target position and speed's fine distance well no here yeah and let's go like that so we finished so we're at target oh, I should have spelled that different so we're, we're at the target where we have traveled we're at the target if we're at the target a stop moving 
I'm going to put just a tiny little weight here because we're stopping the move. And then I'm going to come down here and say set animator trigger is attacking. I'm going to wait. We'll, we'll say two seconds. Should be long enough for the attack to finish. And once we're done that, we wish to, oh, uh, set moving is true. And this time we're going to not move to our target position. We're going to move to our starting position. And once we're there, we can just keep reusing that this thing we need to set rotation so this also means <clears throat> okay if we're at the if the AI if the AI is always on the left may not be the case in the future but right now they're always on the left that means we want the rotation um, ultimately to be uh, 90 but if you just say 90 it's going to be freaking instant and we don't want that we don't because it's going to look bad so we're going to get rotation of our y and we might as well reuse this because we're done with the target y and then we could interpolate linear from target y we want to make sure we're going to 90 over one second's probably fine and i'm going to store it back into target y and set y every frame now when we're done interpolating i'm going to use the finished and we're going to come here and now we're going to finish this FSM. So that's kind of what it looks like. <clears throat> so let's save this as we'll save it as gargoyle attack. Now this could be a template and you could actually reuse this for a lot of AI. So in the attack, when it actually happens, we are now going to run our new template of gargoyle attack. Our target is the target selected here. And when it's finished, we're going to have this one also capitals done action. And that's it right so <clears throat> and, I, and I know that's probably a lot to take in um, and, and I'm sorry about that so we quickly just need to make these two cues the combat cue and the, the normal cue and then we can actually see this gargoyle in action attacking our player so what are we going to do well they're going to be templates right so we're going to run it off of down here right eventually they're going to it's going to it's going to end up here right <clears throat> these two q systems so we have array list um, count so we're going to take our queue and we have a count, which is our queue count. And we're going to int compare. And if queue count is one, if it's equal, we have a queue. 
And if it's greater, we, we have a queue. If it's less, no queue. There is nobody in the queue. All right, so we have queue and we have no queue. So if we have no queue, we're just coming out. Oh my God, just making states like crazy here. And we're coming back in with a next frame. All right, so this is being checked every frame to see if we have a queue. Now, if we have a queue, then we want to array get or array list get from the queue at index zero. So we get him. And what do we need to do? We need to send event to whoever's in the queue and it's now their turn. I'm just gonna drag him in to their combat FSM to select an attack, right? So whoever's turn it is, they're gonna select an attack. And then, let's just end that, and then uh, FSM state test. So if the current in their combat FSM says done, we need someone new or we need to go check the queue. Right, so we can probably go right over here instead. So make it to its next frame. So that's this. And he really, we don't need anything kind of special here. So I'm actually gonna copy him and let's save him as a template. Call him as Q. Oh, yeah, then I can just say no. So, because now, now that we've, we, we have a template made, right? And we still have this FSM. So the other thing we can now do is we can reuse this same thing. And this one's going to be our combat queue. And now it's not going to be... It's going to be in the combat, but it's going to be action. Action satisfaction from current. There we go. Now we don't have done. We have act action done. Right. So now we can save this as combat queue. And no. So now I can delete that. And we can go into our start combat. There is probably one little change we'll have to do the, this a little later on. So that they don't overlap. But I'm not too worried about it right now. There we have. Just like that. Nice and neat and tidy. Right. And if you also want to color these things. Right, like this is like getting info. If you wanted to like change the color of that, like oh, there you go, it's all nice and pretty. Um, yeah. So now we have that. So this is his AI, but this is his list. So let's take this guy and prefab him. Now we can delete him. We can come over here. And we could take our combat gargoyle. Let's put him over here. Uh, let's make sure his scale, his S scale is good. So AI wise, you know, if we come along here, now we can see those three guys are standing there, obviously. And 
let's take a look at what they're thinking. So they have this, their timer, right? And as we see it climbs, okay, it hit 100. So he adds to the queue. Now the queue came along. Oh, he, he has no target because we haven't done that for the player yet. But he selected an attack. He added himself, or he, remo he removed himself from the queue and added himself to the combat queue. So the managers They're all in the same thing. So we need to check that. And then this guy, he's trying to run, it, run an attack, but he can't because the target doesn't exist. So that's one thing we need to do here is we're just going to bring him out and we're just going to give him a, just a little FSM saying actually no we don't even need to do it there uh, we can do it right in the manager so in start combat when we make the players right we're uh, where are we here So here we have this guy, array list add. So let's just add him to the created players. Type game object, the created player. Now they actually, now these, these guys will actually have a thing to, uh, went through behind which we haven't put that kind of logic in yet so what kind of penalty they would have so but if we look at them right he, he wants to attack the dummy this this player so the y is 270 you know what I should have I should have probably guessed that the dummy player is negative 90 and there there is no negatives like there is but there's not um, so we need to to check that we need to fix that All right and <clears throat> I'm gonna keep the other logic in there but I'm just gonna add to it all right, let's get into this template. So let's float compare. Let's just add another one. So if it's 270, he is targets facing left. All right. So now we come along. Uh oh. We have our creative player. What happened to our. Oh, we hit him from the side. Apparently, I did the. Uh, it's not. There's no S in that. Oh. There you go. Spelling, very important when it comes to coding. Things can get extremely picky. All right, always kind of go with the same style. Like I, 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 I try to capitalize the words. I don't care too much about the spaces. So there he goes. Oh, we got to make sure he stops running. We could drop that speed down too. So... He is done action. Right now, if we look into 
our manager into our queue system, we have action done. All right, so let's fix that. All right, because I spelt it wrong. Done action. Oh. All right, spelling, very, very, very important. The other thing is the, let's fix up the, the actual thing here, right? Because we want here, we have is moving is true and he's moving towards when he's there. Let's make sure to tell him to stop moving like play the animation. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the speed down in like half. I think that the speed was, I mean, maybe the high speed is fine, but <clears throat> you know, I think, I think it would look better if it wasn't so fast. So we come in, they go, so he comes in, he does his attack and he runs back. Perfect. So what we need now is this combat guy. Let's see what he's doing. So he's looking at more stuff here, right? And we see combat Q has three. So it should have And of course, I labeled it totally wrong. So, again, just another error on my behalf there. So, combat Q is this. Uh, da, da, da. And, okay, that's combat Q. So when he's when he's here, I think the other thing I'm going to do is array list remove. I want to make sure that the guy that just attacked the current guy is removed from this list. Right <clears throat> now, there is one more thing in here is the attack has is done at or he has done so he select attack and he hits done. this thing here so when we're done I'm gonna wait just a tiny bit and then I want to add them to the combat queue I don't want to add them to the queue right away I don't want to wait a bit until after he's just a kind of a bit of a wait in there. And I think this video is probably going on longer than I'd like it, but, but we're covering a fair bit of stuff here. Hopefully that's okay. So we've, we've come into, okay. We come in one guy, he comes in, he does his attack and he runs back. Next guy comes in because he's done, he goes back. Now, if the player, if he runs that same logic and he's adding himself also to that queue, then uh, he he would he would he would be in that same list, and they would have to wait for their turn as well, right? So in here though, 
uh, one last thing we need to do is that when we remove them, the one thing we need to do is send an event. I totally forgot about this, but we need to send an event to the current in his FSS, FSM combat to reset. And then that will essentially get him to redo the whole thing all over again based on that time. All right, so we come in here, and if we look at what this gargoyle is doing, we see his timer, he selects his attack, he gets to do his attack because he's the first one in kind of turn. All right, he got his reset, so he's counting again. He's queued up and ready, but he has to wait for this guy to be done. This guy's done, so he's going again, right? And now we have this system where they are taking turns doing this attack. They're not doing any damage yet or anything, and the player still needs to his end of this whole show, but there we have this nice little system that's flowing really, really well. Um, everything's feeding off of each other. It's just a really nice thing to see.